Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question of how much do pro magic players earn? And that is a question that Wizard of the Coast wants you to believe that they earn lots and lots of money for being a pro magic player. Now, the large majority of magic players do not give two blanks about pro magic players. It's because they don't attend GPs, they don't even attend FNMs most times, they are strictly casual. So why have all this marketing effort to promote a professional circuit when no one gives a blank to sell cards? That is the simple answer that pros quote brew these new decks which then sell cards. So let's talk about the top 200 all time money leaders. This is via 2018. The most anyone's ever made was PVD at $458,000 all time. Assuming for this purposes of this video, we will assume there is no sponsorship, which we know it is false. And sometimes the sponsorship money can actually be more than the winnings. But we'll just kind of assume that there is none. So about half a million dollars. Sounds pretty good, right? Doesn't this data look really good? No, it's terrible. The reason it's terrible is because this is the total earnings after 10 to 20 years. John Finkel at number two, he's been playing since I was in elementary school during Urza Saga when I was still in, again, I was in fifth grade, fourth grade, when he was one of the best Magic players at the time. So was Mike Long. So... When you look at John Finkel and you look at how much money he's made, he does have a full-time job. You got Kai Buda, William Jensen, you have LSV. I guarantee you LSV has made more in 20 years off his brand than his winnings. You have Owen. Owen, if I read the, if I saw the documentary correctly, I think he still lives at home. The magic documentary where you got to see a little bit about Owen's life. If you assume these people have been magic pros for 10 years, I'm going to use 10 years and you're going to see at the very end why I use 10 years because there's a comparison I want to make with another professional, uh, the NBA, the minimal salary at the NBA. 10 years and you divide all of this by 10, it's about 20 to 40,000 for the very best Magic players. And most of these people have been playing for more than 10 years. Yes, they probably have jobs. And yes, they should be taxed to oblivion. It turns out that airplane tickets, all of these things are taxed. Who would have thought, right? Anyway, my point is this perception, this concept that you can be a magic pro you can do you can play magic win money if you're frank i cannot mention frank's last name otherwise this video will go down if you're creepy frank you can have all the magic females you ever would want just facebook them with the same exact text <laughs> okay i'm gonna get off track if i mention frank's name again you can get all the women you can be the gary oak of Magic the Gathering, you get all the money, all the women, all the power nine, you're good to go, dudes. Just become a magic pro. Live the magic lifestyle. As you go down the list, now we're at 20, we have Saito. Saito is the same guy who would, he, he got caught for this cheat, and this cheat is hilarious. When he shuffles his deck randomly, just imagine you're playing a game, it's middle of the game, he doesn't have a fetch land. There's no reason for him to shuffle his deck, but he's going to do it. Then he's going to present the deck. You cut the deck. As soon as you have the deck still in your hand, he calls a judge on you and says that you took his deck. Eh, hey, anything to win, right? Anything to win. So as we go down these lists of memorables or mentionables, we have people who got God books, who cheated. I mean, I guess... Knowing the cards before they would actually be, 
you know all of these things about leaks, right? These pros got advance notice, and I still believe some of them do, of what cards are going to be printed, reprinted, way before any of us, right? Back in the day, there existed these God books, and I still believe they exist today, because a random dude can walk into a print shop and take the entire... <laughs> Imagine this, they took every single rare and mythic, and then showed and tried to sell on eBay. This is not like a smart dude. The security did not prevent, it, you know, the, this is not a smart dude and he was able to get it. All the commander things, a random dude has all the dragon commander deck way before it's going to be released. It's because these materials have always existed and they always will and they will always be given to pros. You will not be able to beat these people because they have things you do not, including the ability to get cards beforehand. So you have Efro. Uh, we know all about Efro. Um, Efro is the dude who wants you to concede. And if you don't concede, he's going to write a nasty article about how you should concede for the greatest expected value. Uh, we have Ben Rubin. We have Kenji. We have Ivan Flock. A lot of this stuff does not... Yes, they're pros now, but if you wanted to be a pro... A lot of these people don't live near GPs, and they have to travel to Pro Tours. I guess Pro Tours, they pay for it, but you still pay taxes on it. And they take time. It begins like a Friday, I think. I don't know. I've never been in a Pro Tour, but it doesn't seem to be very high expected value, and that's the most expected value event. All right, now we continue, and we have Lee C. Tian. As you guys know how I feel about this dude, because I have a video on him. I mean, you just go over this list, and there's a bunch of people who uh, who have been caught for cheating or who have been suspected of cheating, and they're on this list. This is not a ton of money. This would be a lot of money if it was per year. This is lifetime. A lot of these people have been playing for 10, 15 years. If you divide the amount by the number of years they play, that is their salary. So I would imagine it's anywhere between 20000 to 50000 Sam Black lives with, I think, seven roommates. Like, these people are still living. There's nothing wrong with living with your parents at home. I like my parents a lot. And I live in a home, which is the same size as their home. And maybe 10 minutes away from them. And whenever we have dinner, uh, we can get dinner together. And it's not a big deal. I enjoy my parents' company as I get older. But I would not want to live with them when I'm this age. You know, or I would, if I did live with my parents, I would want to have a plan to make enough money so I can move out. So I'm not criticizing people who live with their parents in today's economy, in today's, you know, college debt and all this stuff, it's understandable. But you should at least have a plan to move out. And that plan to move out, you probably have to make more than $20,000 a year. My best guess is the average pro. Again, these are the 200 lifetime earners. And we're going to get to 200 because that's all we know. Imagine the people who are not on this list and how little money they are making. Towards 200, they're making about 53,000 lifetime earnings. And I get what you say. Hey, they maybe have YouTube channels. Most of them do not. Hey, they may have social media. They might be able to do sponsorships. Yeah, that's all stuff, right? That increases their the money they can intake. But at the end of the day, my biggest criticism about Magic the Gathering professional play uh outside the cheating and the fact there's a lot of cheaters apparently who are so boldened they will cheat on camera all the time. Alex Bacchini. <laughs> Alex Bacchini. My biggest criticism is very simple. You're not getting better at a skill that will make you more money. So if you start today as a developer, let's say you make 50000 That's probably the minimal I would pay a developer in Houston. Eventually in 10 years, they're going to make six figures guaranteed. Because you developed a skill. 
Here, the prize pool does get a little larger, but then the competition gets a little more ferocious. None of this money is guaranteed, and none of the skill can be applied. Yes, you get a little bit better at drafting, but then a new set comes out. Some jobs are like that. Coding is, we no longer code in uh, C or C++. We, we, we don't do that. People don't code in those languages anymore. So people who were very good at those languages needed to find out something, not needed to find something new. Maybe they make mobile apps now. So I think it's as on your resume, you cannot, as we found out, John Finkel, the most famous, most one of the most successful magic players, he did not put on his dating profile that he was a magic world champion. And when Alyssa Fink, I think that was her name, on OKCupid found out, she wrote a long lengthy article on how much of a loser John was for not saying it and how nerdy he was. And she's like nerdy too, right? I mean, my gosh, it was bad. The backlash was very bad for her, but she should have expected it. There's a reason he didn't put it on his dating profile. Imagine being the best at something and not mentioning it on your dating profile. What are you ashamed about? You're the best. You are looked up to. If you're Frank, you're going to use that ability and hit on every female at every tournament every time. Because you already have the script, right? You don't need to come up with new love concepts. You can just run what you've previously been running for years. Okay, what is this number? This is the yearly, quote, yearly salary, not lifetime, yearly salary of an NBA, the worst person on an NBA team. Minimal, This an NBA team can, is not allowed to pay less than this amount per year. The least amount of salary you're going to get is almost double the lifetime, the 10, 15, 20 year lifetime prize earning of the most successful Magic Pro in history. If you had a child and they were equally good at Magic, really good at Magic and equally good at basketball, you got to send them to basketball because that child can make double the money as long as he can get on a team. He can make double the money being the worst player in the NBA for one year than the whole lifetime of the best Magic the Gathering professional player. That is why Magic Pros are a joke. It's all about the money. Show me the money. Imagine what the average Magic Pro grinder who's never won a large event, who's never done well, how much money are they making? Not rent, I can tell you that much. Not rent. Anyway, that's it. This is a very nasty video, isn't it? Anyway, bye guys.